Hello and welcome, this is Dawn. I'm excited for today's video because I get to share with you a new to me medium liquid watercolor. I'm gonna be pairing that with our Just Breathe and I have three gorgeous cards that all work around the same basic technique and layout. So I'm working on Fabriano Artistico's enhanced quality watercolor paper. And I've trimmed that down to a standard A2 card size, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Now, as I mentioned, these are new to me. Greg over at Concord and Ninth was kind enough to send these to me to try out, and I am really excited to get to know this medium. I haven't got to use it a ton yet, but today you get to see one of the ways that I really like to use it. These are very, very concentrated, uh, very vibrant, and a little will go a long way. So I put a drop or two into the wells of a palette here, and that way I'm not putting out more than I need to. However, if you do, don't fear, they are reconstitutable. reconstitutionable re you can add water to them and reuse them. That's what I'm trying to say, <laughs> if they dry in the palette. Okay, we're using the Just Breathe stamp set, and we're gonna use the large bird and rose to create both our focal point and our background. So I'm using my Misty and a sticky Misty mat here to stamp out my background. Again, I'm stamping on watercolor paper. This is cold pressed, so it is textured. So sometimes I may have to re-stamp, and this is why I chose to use the Misty. If you're working on smooth cardstock, you could get away with a stamp press or a block. I'm also cleaning and drying my stamp in between. Because most of the stamp is hanging off of the edge, I'm moving the stamp and repositioning it versus moving the paper. So I don't want to lay down a dirty stamp on there and uh, transfer ink. I am using W plus 9's black ink, and this is a waterproof ink. Use whatever you have on hand, just make sure that it's waterproof because we will be adding water. Now once I've got all the main portions down, I'll just switch to a block because it's easier and I'm only adding a little bit of leaves here and there, just to fill in gaps. Alright, now time to watercolor. I'm working with a, um, what am I using here? Princeton Heritage 4050 series. I believe this, it's either size 5 or 6. Don't quote me. It's one of the two. I will have all of the supplies listed in the description box below. All right, like I mentioned, these are really concentrated. So when you pull them straight from the pan, you are going to get very vibrant color. This is one of the things that I found to be different than traditional watercolor. Traditional watercolors, um, they tend to dry back a little bit lighter and the colors are a little more muted for the most part. These are super vibrant. So if you like pow in your face color, liquid watercolors might be something you wanna look into. Or if you don't like the soft, dry back that uh, traditional watercolor has. Again, these might be right up your alley. Um, what I really like these for is what I'm doing here. I like the loose illustrative watercolor and I like it with a black outline. If you've seen many of my videos, you know that I prefer to do no line watercolor because I feel like the harsh black outline actually overpowers the softness of watercolor and takes away from the uh, the beauty that you can get from watercolor. So here, these colors, like I said, are very vibrant and they stand up well to that hard black outline. So I really like them for this and um, they will be my go-to when I'm doing black stamping versus no line watercolor. All right, we're gonna go into fast motion here because you can see I am just dropping the color and moving it around with a wet brush. Now you, off the camera, you don't see me. Um, there's a, This is a oval uh, palette. So over on the other side, I do have some of their ballet slippers, which is their lighter pink. And I'm using that as a base. Put some down, use the water to move it out. I'm not being overly concerned or careful about where it's going. I'm just letting it do its thing. Then I'm dropping in some of their buttercup. Ooh, sorry, dropping in some of their buttercup and also dropping in some of the grapefruit. Again, one of the things that I really, really like about the liquid watercolors is they're gorgeous for wet and wet techniques. So you can see the way that uh, color just burst into that water. Oh, so pretty. And you can get some really unexpected results by doing this. So I started with their Stardust which is a yellowy green color. And now I'm dropping in some sprout and I'm just letting it run. Sometimes I might coax it out a little bit, but for the most part, I just drop it and go. And I really, really like 
the unexpected blends that you get with the wet and wet. And I think it has something to do with the fact that they're already in liquid form. So they're ready to run and mix. They're ready to mingle. <laughs> so let's see, pretty much the same repetitive thing here. Base of Stardust, drop in the Sprout. And then once all of that had dried, I'm just gonna come in and put in a little bit more deeper color here and there. I wanted to see how they layered. And they're layering nicely. Uh, didn't get a, they didn't disturb the layers underneath. They are stable once they're dry. You can lift, but um, just like regular watercolors, it's gonna be a little bit of scrubbing action. But these are pigment based. So you do shake them. You'll see there's some pigment settlement at settled at the bottom of your bottle. Shake it up. But the nice thing about it being pigment versus ink is that it doesn't stain the paper like an ink watercolor would. It also means that when they dry in the palette, you can re-wet them and reuse them. So that's really nice. So again, here you can see I'm just going through and adding a little bit of depth, hitting uh, the rose in some of the, the uh, sh shadowed areas, the deeper recesses, but again, I'm not paying attention to make it realistic. I kind of really like this loose, playful, illustrative look. Now, I did find the Fabriano Artistico Enhanced to be my favorite paper with these. Um, I tried a couple. I tried uh, Arches. I tried the Fabriano Artistico. Oh, quick note here. I did heat set my stamping just because I was going straight from stamping to watercoloring and I didn't want it to bleed. So there's that. Now back to the Enhanced watercolor paper. So the Enhanced they have two versions, and I believe that they are discontinuing the original Fabriano Artistico, which makes me really upset because it is my favorite watercolor paper. The enhanced version has more sizing, which is usually a gelatin that is applied to the surface and sometimes the interior of the paper. And again, that just keeps the um, water and the pigment on top of the paper longer before it soaks into the paper. And again, that is what creates that movement and the fluidity. So. It's not my favorite paper, um, but it is great for certain techniques. Uh, here, it works perfect for the liquid watercolors, and it was my favorite. Uh, the Prima watercolor was probably my least favorite. Uh, the colors did uh, just kind of grab and stay, so they didn't move quite as nicely as they do on this paper. I also tried some mixed media paper, some Vicky Booten Foundations paper, and they worked well on that as, um, as well. So uh, just something to note. Paper will always affect the medium that you're using, and it's always nice to try a couple different papers when you're trying a new medium and find out which one works best for your technique. Speaking of technique, this is going to be our focal image. And I still want it to match the background, but I do want to take a little bit more time, maybe add a little more detail to this image, but we're still not going for realism. Just wanted to see how this would handle um, more layers, glazing, that sort of thing. See how far I could uh, take these and if they really performed like traditional watercolor or I guess to find their limitations, but without pushing them too far. <laughs> I'm still getting to know them. And I like the where this card is going and I like the style. So I am adding a couple more layers as you can see, but I'm still keeping that graphic look and not over blending the watercolors. You'll notice I didn't color the rose like petal by petal. Um, I, I didn't go all out. <laughs> We're still going for quick and easy and fun. So here, I think I did add a little bit of their marmalade into the bird's wing here. Don't ask me what type of bird it is. I don't know, I don't care. It is a simple bird that I'm coloring any color I want. <laughs> and when you do it, you should color in any color you want to. Now I'm gonna add in a little bit of, um, a little shading, a little deeper color into this rose. Again, I'm not paying attention to um, light source, any of that. I have a general light source. My go-to is usually the upper left-hand corner. I don't know why, it's just the way my brain automatically does it. And again, a little bit deeper color here, dropping that in. 
and I like this uh, a little bit vibrant the shadows would you know if we were going for realism those shadows would be duller but I like the vibrancy so I figured why not take advantage of it right I'm adding a little bit of their dove to the beak and you can see here I'm lifting that color out and it lifts beautifully so don't fear if you go a little dark just use that damp brush and lift them up and then adding a little bit of that dove also to the bird's wing here and just a little bit around the uh, belly area just to create a little bit of a rounded effect adds a little bit of drama all right so now i'm going to trim this out with scissors and i'm using i think these are the tonic tim holtz tonic scissors and I'm leaving a little bit of a white edge here. I like it. Some people like to cut up right to the line. If you do, then you do you, your craft room, your rules. I think this is gonna look great here. I've put a vellum circle behind the bird and I'm going to glue the bottom half directly to the vellum circle. And I'm using some honeybee glue there. And then I'm gonna pop up the head and the leaf with a little bit of foam tape foam squares to be exact. And then I'm gonna trim off this little bit of uh, these leaves that are hanging off and I'm gonna keep it in the um, silhouette of the circle there. So I'm just trimming around and then I'm going to tuck those leaves back up and I'm gonna fill in that little bit of white space there on the right lower corner. You see that? I like the way the bird is following the shape of the background. That was kind of serendipitous. So I decided to add those little bit of leaves there and to really follow the shape of the, the uh, background there. You can see how these just nestle in there perfectly. I love it. Okay, so I adhered that with some foam squares. And for the sentiment, the sentiments in this set, uh, they, there's no dies for this set. I didn't feel like it needed it. However, for this particular um, layout, I needed my sentiments to be trimmed out. So I used the little things, I used the thank you, and then I use the all the little things you do make a big difference, which is also in the little things. Finish this off with some thread, some jewels from Honeybee Stamps. Backed that with the grapefruit uh, cardstock from Concord and Ninth. And then I added a little bit of liquid shimmer from Honeybee on top of the bird and the flowers. I don't know if it's catching it in the camera, but it's there. Here I made another version. I did pretty much the same thing. This time I just left the bird intact. And then I added the sentiment and the dye from Honeybee. This is their My Favorite Flower. And again, I added a few of those gems. I love this layout. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, and then for the final card, I decided to take that liquid shimmer from Honeybee and add it directly to the watercolor and then paint with that. And this gave me this really subtle shimmer throughout the whole thing without covering up my lines. Sometimes the shimmer can go on kind of thick. This time I used the sentiments from the Just Breathe stamp set and I just really love the way this one turned out. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you enjoyed this look at liquid watercolors. I will definitely be using these more in the future, especially when I'm doing black stamping. So I'm happy to have them in my arsenal. As mentioned, all of the products will be listed in the description below. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.